Hi, I'm Adam, software engineer at Rivet Games. Today I'm going to show you a bit of the setup of the upcoming ScotRail Class 385 for Train Sim World 3. So here in the cab, there's a few little things we have to do to get set up before we can drive the train. Uh, you need to open up these doors. This door here needs to open, which you can do by clicking on the side here, but it won't let you open it until you've opened up this side here to get the correct orientation. There's a little animation there that just to help you with instead of trying to fiddle about with all the doors and the collision, um, it just plays that part for you. And then you should be able to open up that door and you're ready to drive. So talking about the driver only operation, uh, we've also got the TMS screen working here. So when you load it up, it will show you your formation here and the formation numbers will display. Uh, currently they're not showing up quite properly. And then you can confirm got a little login screen. You can log in just by pushing any four numbers, enter and log in, uh, rather than having to come up with an ID. Once you're loaded in, you'll still get your formation here and you'll have a few options. I'm going to turn the lighting off because it's not displaying super clear. So you've got obviously your miles per hour, your time and date, destination. If we were on a timetable service, that will display there just like it would on the outside. Then you've got three different screens. Then you've got your virtual circuit breaker, which will be useful to see when you're driving along and reach the neutral zones, which is something that we've also got on the route. You've got your door selection screen, so you can click which doors that you want to open and you can click to open them on that side. And then you'll get a display that shows you all the doors that are currently open. And you'll see that on this screen as well. Then down here, we've got a little brightness slider this is a little information screen to tell you what, like which color equals open and closed and things like that. It's a little key, obviously nothing there yet. Um, and then this screen here, this is where you can go to do an uncouple. You can set your saloon lighting on and off. And then we've got this auto announcer system. This is very cool. I'm very happy with this. Uh, basically what you can do here is you can click any of these pre-recorded messages and click announce and it will play the sound. Welcome to the class 385 service to Glasgow Queen Street. The other thing it also has, which I, I'm very pleased with and took a lot of time to try and get working, I could show in the blueprints what's happening with that, is these ones that say arrive at dot dot dot, this is dot dot dot. Those things work and they will automatically grab the station that you are currently like your current objective or your next objective from the timetable and it will fill that in for you so if you click this is and announce it will say this is haymarket um, or we are now arriving at haymarket or this train is for edinburgh waverley or whatever so it'll automatically fill all those things in for you so here in the blueprint for the 385 um, we can see what i've set up for the auto announcer so this is where it grabs this whole mess here is where it grabs the next destinations we've got a begin play over here so as the game begins it comes in it grabs the timetable and it does a bind to event when an instruction is completed so whenever an instruction in the timetable is completed it's going to fire my little event over there which is useful because that way i don't have to check constantly has the destination changed? Has it changed? Has it changed yet? Has it changed yet? Um, I can only do it when it actually potentially has changed. Um, and the other thing it sets up is these little names here. So it's got a final destination. This isn't going to change. That's just the destination right at the very end, just like normal, like you would get on your little destination board uh, visually on the train. So that's the same. But then the bits here is we've got the current destination and the next destination which gets set based on the progress that you've made through the timetable service. So if we had a little look at a basic timetable here, this is just on my test level, you would have a stop at specified location. So on a normal map, like on the Edinburgh Glasgow map, you would have like the destination would be Haymarket and then it would grab that from here and it would be able to then update uh, based on that, update the name of the destination. That stuff then goes into the audio controller, which 
plays the sound and just grabs the name from here uh, so it knows which audio clip to play. The other thing that this trim will do is that the AI will also announce things as you're traveling along on an AI service. So if you explore on foot and then decide to get on a train, the train will sometimes announce things to you. So there's a little list that I've put here. So it will randomly select between any of these things here. And these are just our little audio clips. So it'll play on and off trains or mind the gap or check you've got valid tickets. Maybe it will say this train is for whatever. And then it just sends that information in this little event dispatcher, which is dealt with by the audio guy. You can also choose on this screen if you want to repeat the same message over and over. So if you click continuous and then click any of these and then announce it, it will announce over and over and over and over until you tell it to stop. Uh, you can also click repeat and choose how many times you want it to repeat and it will just play it that many times and then stop. For the door control, you have a few options. You can either use the door release and door close buttons on the respective side of the cab as you would on any other train. Use the tab menu or if you don't want to use the driver only operation, we've still got access to the guard panels just like we did on the 484. The only difference is if you want to use those guard panels, you need to push this door handover button for the side that you want the doors to be able to be controlled by a guard. Uh, in train sim world, that will end up being you anyway. So you would just push that button and then that'll give you access to the guard panels on the right side. If we go to the guard panel, just here, you can open up the guard panel and it's got the exact same functionality as we had on the Isle of Wight. Um, it's set up the same way you have to turn the little switch. Obviously none of the lights are showing up at the moment. And then you've got access to open up your guard door. That'll open up just this one. You can check none of those ones are working. And that just works in blueprints by normally I have an array that has all of the doors on the train inside of it. And what happens here is when you turn this key, it just removes this door from that array. And so when you click to open or close the doors, it ignores this one. And then when you turn that key back again, this gets re-added to that array. And so it becomes part of that uh, opening and closing thing again. This is the blueprint inside the DMCL driving unit. And the C in that is for composite. And that means that it's got a first class. And the interesting thing about this one is that it's the only one in the whole train that has blinds. And so I thought I'd add a little extra feature into here. So when the game or when a service begins, it'll do a check of the weather and see what the temperature and the cloudiness level is to see if it's sunny essentially and if it's sunny it will set the blinds uh, or pull the blinds down at a random interval to sort of simulate like passengers pulling it down to stop it blinding them so i'll just pop into the game and we can see where those blinds are i don't think this test level has any weather attached to it and so it probably doesn't do anything but we can have a look so here's the blinds in the first class area. You can see that they're all down by default, but when you're playing in the route, uh, it will randomly select based on the weather. And obviously if it's not super sunny, probably just put them up here. They'll all be up the top. So I thought it would also be interesting to look at the, the way that numbering is done in TSW. So that's just these little numbers on the front and on the side you'll notice that they're slightly different but the ending part is the same it's the similar kind of setup for most trains 385122 that's for this whole set of four and then the 441112 tells you that it's specifically this composite vehicle from this so it's the 441 lets you know it's this one and then you'll see this one is 442 to let you know that it's this trailer with the pantograph, I think. Yeah, so that's got the two, but they're all part of the 122 set. So that is all set up by these little RVN 
So this is the RVN for the four car. So what you'll see is we've got actually both numbers written out here. And when the train spawns in, it'll pick one of these 23 different numbers, which we've taken from what real life would be running on this route. And then it will randomly select one that hasn't already been picked on the route at the current point. So once it's done that, it'll get you that big long string. And what we do is we look at for the top numbers, these ones up here, we're just looking at the first six digits and that gives us this number. Obviously that's the one, two, two, one. So that'll be using here. So it's the first six from there get put on here. But then it's a little bit different for here because in here we've got C4411122, which is fine for this one, but this one has a two. So what has to happen for each of these ones that have got something different is we go into the individual uh, setup for that train, for that vehicle, and edit that one number to change to what it's supposed to be. In this case, it's reasonably simple. You just swap the one for a two for all vehicles that are there because they're always the same. For other trains, like for example, the 523, there's a little checksum that gets added to the end, which is based on uh, some maths that you do with its number that will be generated depending on the number uh, as you load into the game. So here we are just outside of the Murrayfield Stadium near Haymarket. And this is one of the two locations where you'll get some neutral zones. And what the neutral zone is, is essentially it's when it changes over from using one grid of electricity to another. And in order to stop the train pantograph frying everything, it has little neutral zone magnets where it opens the circuit breaker uh, as you cross them. And you'll hear a little clunk and then you'll lose power. And then when you get over the other side, it will uh, reconnect and you'll get your power back again. So you'll notice that as you go across these zones, you'll audibly should be able to hear, if you're in the pantograph trailer specifically, you'll hear the clunk um, of the pantograph as the circuit breaker is opening. And then you will lose power. There'll be an engine sort of, uh, you'll like hear the drop off of power in the cab as well. And you'll see that little, on the TMS screen, you'll see that you've lost You've got the uh, VCB will come on to show you that that's active. And then when you go across, it will reconnect and you'll power back up again. So it's important that you don't stop your train right here, because if you stop your train right there, then you're stuck and you'll need something to push you or something because you're not going to be moving. But you should be going fast enough at these sections anyway that you won't fall into any problems. It should be fine. Thanks for watching this video on the UE4 setup for the class 385. Make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.